Batman Arkham City is considered the greatest Arkham game to ever be released and one of the greatest superhero games of all time, with the story being one of the best in the entire series, and its gameplay being as perfected as it was for its time. There's no wonder as why this game is considered one of the greatest. But while the main game stands out on its own for being an amazing masterpiece, do the side missions really tell the same story? Do the side missions in Arkham City really add anything good to the game other than just being side missions to make the game feel full, or do they actually pull their own weight along with the main story to make the game feel like an amazing experience? That's why in this video, we're gonna go over all of the 12 side missions in Batman Arkham City in great detail to answer the question, are Arkham City side missions worth playing or are they just filler content? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, now let's get into it shall we? The first mission we're gonna go over is the Arkham Assault Axel Violence mission or most commonly known amongst fans as the Political Prisoners. And in this mission, you essentially save political prisoners thrown into Arkham City by Hugo Strange from random thugs attacking them. And in my opinion, it's one of the more satisfying missions in the game as this takes Batman back to his roots of saving people on the streets of Gotham before there were any huge supervillains within his rogues gallery. It really makes the player feel good about themselves when you do save them as while you're flying across the city or just completing part of the main story you're able to hear their cries for help while getting beat up and you can either ignore it and move on with the story or intervene right away and save them and honestly most times i find myself instantly saving them as it gives you the essence of feeling like a real superhero and making a difference in someone's life and it's really one of the more realistic missions in the game unlike the others that are more extravagant this is one of the more simple ones that you can do and feel good in the end at the same time but one of the biggest cons of this mission is the fact that it's complete rng where these political prisoners spawn throughout the city as they don't show up in the same places in every playthrough. So for people that want 100% the game, you're gonna have to play the waiting game for most of them to spawn or you'll have to go out looking for them. As yes, you can get a majority of them while playing through the main story, but once it gets down to the single digits, since there are only 16 that you can help, it gets really hard to pin down where they will show up as you can't stop all 16 with one flight through around the city as again, it is random when and where they will show up. But overall, this mission is really worth playing through as it's implemented really well within this game as you can complete it while going through the main story and it's treated as a legit side mission and even though it is just the same thing over and over again the hint of randomness and the act of positivity you commit within the mission itself definitely outweighs the repetitiveness of this mission as a whole next up are the back computer ar training modules which in my opinion are only worth playing for the grapnel boost and after that it's essentially just an afterthought unless you really want to get better at the movement within this game but as you get through the game you would naturally get better with the movement since it's a pretty long game and the most you have to learn is the diving mechanic and staying in the air for longer when gliding and other than that you should be completely fine i think the way they tackle these modules in arkham knight and transform them at the challenge modes instead of training modules was really clean as instead of you just doing the training modules once and never touching them again like in city in night you can play them to try to get the highest score you possibly can while also trying to train your skills in combat or stealth while feeling fulfilled by the end of it but since it was the first time in the series that they actually added this feature i'll give them the benefit of the doubt but overall there's nothing inherently bad about it being in the game but i definitely think they should have added more rewards for doing them rather than just having the grapnel boost being given to you after completing the first four and nothing else after that because who really completed the augmented reality training modules in this game because they actually wanted to because i know i didn't hot and cold and remote hideaway are going to be the next two missions that we'll tackle at once since they both are essentially the exact same mission and are the two simplest missions in the entire game first of all let's go over the iceberg lounge remote hideaway as all you have to do is go back to the iceberg lounge after you capture the penguin and talk to one of the guards in which he gives you an upgrade to your remote disruptor which is a mine detonator which you can use on mines that thugs put down during stealth sections hot and cold on the other hand is somewhat different as in order to obtain this mission you actually have to speak to harley while she's tied up within the steel mill and she'll tell you that the joke stole one of Free's weapons and locked it up in the boiler room which triggers the side mission and all you have to do after that is go to the boiler room and beat up some joker goons and retrieve Freeze's cluster grenade that you can use for the duration of the game both are pretty simple but i think remote hideaway should have at least put up some sort of challenge in order to obtain the mind detonator as all you have to do is speak to the guard to retrieve it versus hot and cold which is equally as simple but at least it forces you to trigger certain events in order to achieve your goal but in my opinion it isn't really necessary to do these unless you really want to use these weapons or want to 100 the game but you can honestly get on with the game without ever needing to use these weapons once because Honestly, messing with Harley is a lot more fun than searching for a mind detonator that I'm probably never going to use and probably only once. Filler content? Maybe. But doing this will never get old. But now that we've gotten all of the random side missions out of the way, let's now get started on the actual villain side mission, starting with Bane, which in my opinion was probably the biggest letdown of a villain use next to Deadshot, as in this mission you have to help Bane locate and destroy all of the Titan containers scattered across the city. As Bane isn't too fond of other people abusing its powers that he was tested on by Dr. Young back in Arkham Asylum, Bane and Batman agree that they will locate and destroy all 12 by taking 6 each. And by the end of the mission, you fight alongside Bane as some random thugs try to take the Titan away from Bane. And once the fight's over, Bane reveals that instead of destroying the Titan containers like he agreed to, he actually rounded them up so that he could use them all for himself. But as the sequence goes on, you'd think this cutscene would transition into a boss fight of some sort since Bane literally tells Batman to die. But all that happens next is Bane runs into a cell and Batman traps him by throwing a batarang onto the button to shut it closed. Now this right here just destroyed any hope for this side mission. As you'd think such a repetitive side mission for a villain
villain would pay off in some sort of boss fight in the end. But no, all that happens is you fight a bunch of goons alongside Bane and then beat Bane within a cutscene. I was honestly so disappointed with this side mission. And if there was an actual boss fight for this mission at the end, I wouldn't call it filler content whatsoever because it actually has a payoff at the end. But since it ended like this, I'm forced to call it filler because there's literally no payoff in the end and you essentially just waste your time finding and destroying these containers for no reason whatsoever. The fight with Bane is kind of cool as this is the first time you're actually teaming up with a villain other than Mr. Freeze. There should have been some sort of boss fight in the end instead of it ending with a cutscene. Overall, this is not worth playing whatsoever unless you really like the cutscene in the end. And even with that, I don't even think it's even close to be called content worth playing. Next up is the Riddler and let's be honest here for a second. Arkham City's Riddler has to be hands down the best depicted Riddler in the Arkham series and probably in Batman media as a whole. He was just so well designed as a character that I just boosted his stock as a character since these games came out because he's just so well made within these games. Now as for the side missions in itself, out of all the Arkham games that has Riddler implemented within them, which is literally all of them, they all have one thing in common. They all have you collecting either Riddler trophies or data packs in order to defeat the Riddler in one way or the other. But I think this game definitely perfected it to the highest level as in this side mission Riddler kidnaps the guards that you saved at the beginning of the game from Harley Quinn in the church and once you return there you're greeted with the Riddler admitting this and him conversing to you that the more challenges you complete the more hostage locations he'll reveal to you and in my opinion I think this is what the Riddler challenges should have been throughout the entirety of the franchise because it actually gives the player some motivation to actually complete his challenges and collect his trophies as in Arkham Knight for example you can just save Catwoman by completing his puzzle without ever touching a Riddler trophy whatsoever and once the game ends Riddler basically takes over Gotham until you collect them all which really isn't enough motivation to stop him as you need to collect every trophy in order to fight him. But on Arkham City's mission, you literally have to collect the trophies to save the hostages from Riddler and the locations aren't right away given to you from the beginning. You have to earn them, which I think was a really good way to implement the trophies and somewhat make the player want to collect them. I also think the Enigma machine was also a really cool addition as it was a new and fun way to solve the riddles and earn the locations from each of the six hostages. And of course, the ending is pretty dark as he takes a page out of Batman's contingency plans for the Flash and straps bombs to the rest of the hostages that explodes if they stop moving. In my opinion, it's really worth to play through this and do all the Riddler challenges, but mind you, there are 400 challenges that you have to complete to capture him, which yes, is a lot, but overall, definitely worth completing more than any of the other Arkham games in the series, which just goes about it all wrong and doesn't give any motivation for the player to actually do it other than you want to capture the Riddler. Rather, instead, just place there as an option if you want to do it. But next up on the chopping block is the Mr. Freeze Heart of Ice mission, which becomes available to you once you defeat Mr. Freeze and rescue Vicky Vale from the helicopter crash. As once you defeat Freeze, he begs Batman to find his wife Nora and save her as Joker had kidnapped her. Yes, there are a lot of kidnappings that happen within this game. But as I was saying, once you save Vicky, you get intel from Freeze that he managed to locate the general area as to where his wife is being held up, which turns out to be within the Sionna steel mill. And once you figure that out, you break into the steel mill, fight Joker goons, and report back to Freeze so you can rescue her. Overall, I don't really know what to think about this mission. As yes, you do feel good helping Mr. Freeze find his wife, but at the same time, it isn't that difficult of a mission and it's pretty short. I think what would have made this mission much more worth playing would be to see at least a cutscene at the end of Batman and taking Freeze to the location and having him save his wife. But all that happens is that we go back to the GCPD building and talk to Freeze for a minute and that's it. I think there definitely could have been a better ending to this mission, like we see in the Arkham Knight DLC mission for example, where we see him and his wife interacting for the first time on screen and then just sailing out into the ocean. But overall, I think this mission is definitely worth playing because at least it isn't dragged on for too long like some other missions and is short and sweet and straight to the point. But it definitely should have had a better ending to it because it's really unsatisfying to just find his wife and end the mission by just talking to Freeze. This is definitely a pattern that will continue with some of the other missions we're going to talk about as they either don't have good boss fights or not one at all or the ending is just really bad like even a small cutscene like i just mentioned would have been enough to make it a satisfying ending altogether but i guess we do get one in arkham knight that blows it out the water completely so i'll take that as a win next up is hush's side mission which is one of the coolest side missions in the game in my opinion as it has you follow intel heard from a tiger guard about a person found dead in an alleyway with their face completely removed and once you investigate the body and follow the trail back to the political prisoner he reveals that he wasn't the one that killed them but actually bruce wayne this story continues through to the next crime scene where Batman puts together some fingerprints of the suspect to gain a lead on them. And when Oracle checks the prints against every record in the country, since it doesn't actually match any criminal within Gotham, it turns out that the prints actually belong to Bruce Wayne. And once you get to the third and final victim, you follow a trail of Bleach with Thug hiding out in Arkham City, in which he reveals that it was actually Bruce Wayne that hired him to pour Bleach over the crime scene to get rid of the evidence, and also reveals the location of his hideout within the city as well. And when you get there, it's revealed that the suspect is actually Thomas Elliot, also as Hush or the Identity Thief, and it turns out that he stitched his face from all the victims to look like Bruce Wayne, who was also voiced by Kevin Conroy, which I think is so cool. The weirdest part of this mission, however, is when Hush exits the building, Batman tells Oracle that he left Arkham City when he literally just left the building a few seconds ago. Like, how far could he really have made it from the city by the time Batman is done hacking the cell open? In my opinion, this mission is really worth playing as it brings up Batman's detective side and allows for some sort of mystery as Oracle is somewhat convinced that Bruce may have committed these crimes under the Scarecrow's influence.
influence when the prince turned out to be Bruce's. This mission is very similar to the Professor Pig mission in Arkham Knight, but much shorter and less graphic. As in that game, the kills are a lot more gruesome, and the final fight is very disturbing as well. But I think the ending we get for this mission was very fulfilling, because not only do we track him through multiple crime scenes, but we also get to interact with him through a cutscene, which I think just seals the deal for this mission as content worth playing and not filler content whatsoever. I just wish Hush could have played a bigger role in Arkham Knight, because in my opinion, Arkham City's Hush mission just overhyped Knight's mission and was just mediocre. So yes, this mission may have been really good, but the execution of the continuation into the next game was just horrible. Azrael's mission is up next, and this mission overall is pretty interesting, as just like in Arkham Knight, Azrael shows up in different locations across the city, and as you speak to him throughout the mission, he just tells you over and over again that he's been watching Batman for a long time, and every time you speak to him, he leaves a symbol on the floor that you can scan and appears on the map. But once you've spoken to him enough times, the number of symbols he leaves reflects a sigil that can be displayed over the map of the city, which pinpoints the exact location he will appear next. And when you go to that location in question, you find the exact sigil that was created on the map on a wall, and Azrael himself, as he gives you a message basically predicting the next game, setting up for Scarecrow's return, and Batman's fall as the Dark Knight as we know it. This mission, in my opinion, was not what I was expecting out of an Azrael mission, as every time you speak to him, or should I say he speaks to you, he says one line and disappears, and then just disappears forever at the end of the mission. It was honestly one of the more boring missions, as you don't really do much to complete this mission. And if you happen to spot him within the city, you talk to him and that's about it. I understand they were probably trying to set up his character for Arkham Knight, but I think Rock said he could have done a lot more than what we got in this game. I'm not necessarily going to call it filler content, as the interactions you have with him are cool, and the fact that he leaves a symbol that forms a sigil on the map to a precise location is also really cool. I just don't think it was as good as it could have been, but I do think it was implemented into the game very well, along with some other missions in this game, as you can complete it by getting through the main story as he shows up in the background of some cutscenes when speaking to certain NPCs in the game to make it easier to spot him. But other than that, I think they missed the mark with this mission. Arkham Knight's mission is definitely much better than this by a long shot, and they definitely redeemed themselves in that game. But next up is Mad Hatter's mission, which of course is the best visually looking mission in the entire game, as this is his debut in the Arkham series as a whole, and ever since this game released, Mad Hatter's missions have been consistently well designed, both visually and story slash gameplay wise, throughout every other game in the entire series. Now, as a mission in itself, it's really well put together, as the way you get to the mission is that you're tricked by a video signal from Alfred that Lucius Fox had put together a cure for the Joker virus, and once Batman takes it, he passes out, as it was actually Jervis who put that signal out for Batman, which kind of confuses me because how would it be Alfred's voice on the signal if Jervis doesn't know Batman's identity? Maybe I'm misreading this entire scenario and it was actually Alfred talking to him, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. But once you awaken, you're taken to Jervis's hideout in which he takes over your mind and fight a bunch of goons literally within your mind under Jervis's control, while also dressed up as a rabbit and seeing Batman dressed up like this thing is both hilarious and super disturbing at the same time. And of course, Batman beats them all to a pulp and defeats Jervis at his own game. In my opinion, this mission is absolutely perfect and it's very unique in the way that you're put into the mission by being tricked by the Hatter and also unique in the way that the mission is played out within his own mind. And this pattern continues throughout the other games in the series as all the other Hatter missions take place within Batman's mind as well. But as the first mission that Jervis gets within these games in general, it really is amazing how well directed it is, especially the first person mode you're put into at the beginning of the mission. It's just all around a really cool experience and it's definitely worth playing just for the design of level alone. It is definitely not filler content whatsoever and in my opinion, it's one of the best missions if not the best mission in the entire game as a whole. Deadshot is next up on the chopping block as his mission in my opinion is both one of the best and one of the worst missions in this entire game. As the initial mission in itself is good, but the ending is terrible. But let me explain before you go into a full panic mode, okay? The mission basically has you tracking down Deadshot as he kills off targets given to him by Hugo Strange. This starts with the political prisoner that you speak to as he's shot to death, and two others that you don't find in time. Most of the mission has you tracing bullets from the end location to the start to see where Deadshot was located when he shot the bullet. And once you investigate three crime scenes, you're led to the substations across Arkham City in which one out of the three contains Deadshot's equipment and a PDA, which you find a list of people on his hit list given to him by Hugo Strange, including Jack Ryder, Bruce Wayne, and Batman. And once you figure this out, you are then led to saving Jack Ryder's life, which leads into probably the worst boss fight in this entire game, and maybe the entire series, because it's literally the easiest stealth section in the entire game, as you literally just wait till Deadshot is turned around, which gives you a chance to get under him and take him out. And this right here is the reason why I call Deadshot's mission both one of the best and worst missions in this entire game, because the initial gameplay is really good, as it makes you investigate multiple crime scenes and indicate where Deadshot was when he shot his bolts originally, but just to throw all the hype away for a mediocre boss fight is just so disappointing. In my opinion, this mission is still definitely worth playing, as it's very cool in its own right, but its ending is just so unsatisfying, and it's such an easy and basic boss fight against the world's greatest assassin who never misses a shot. And finally, we've gotten to Victor Zaz's mission, which in my opinion is the best mission out of the entire game. But before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as I post videos every single week, just like this one, and have a multitude of shorts on the channel dedicated to the Arkham game. So if you're into that, subscribe to the channel because it helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. But now with the promo out of the way, let's get 
get back to the final side mission in Batman Arkham City, which is Victor Zaz's phone calls. And when I first played through this mission, I found them super eerie and just really disturbing altogether. The voice actor must have gotten some sort of raise because he completely embodied this character as Zaz's development from Arkham Asylum to this game is just amazing. And his voice is just so perfect for this character. But for those who aren't familiar, Zaz's mission has you answering his phone calls throughout the city with a certain time limit. And if you fail, he kills the political prisoners he had kidnapped. And the reason why I say this mission is the best in the entire game is purely because of the phone calls themselves. As while you're on the phone with Zaz, he recounts his origin and how he came to be the person he is now. It's also the best because the calls themselves just give off such a disturbing energy and Zaz himself is a very disturbed individual. For those who are unaware, every time he kills someone, he etches a tally mark into his skin to keep count of the amount of people he's killed. Yeah, that's how messed up this guy is. But once you've answered enough of his phone calls, Batman is able to encrypt the calls and track the location of where the call came from to which he finds Zaz's hideout and inevitably stop him. But not without Zaz breaking his promise and killing one of the three prisoners he had even though Batman didn't miss a single call. Overall, Zaz's mission is one of the best missions in Arkham City as a whole and is definitely worth playing purely for the phone conversations you have with him and to hear his origin and how he describes it in very graphic detail. And even though the mission is repetitive, the challenge it puts up doesn't make it feel that way because every time you answer that phone, you know you're in for a disturbing story time with Zaz. But now we've reached the part you've all been waiting for and after everything that's been said throughout this video, it's time to finally answer the question you've all been so eagerly patient to hear. Are Arkham City side missions worth playing or are they just filler content? And my answer is yes. The side missions in Arkham City are very much worth playing as many of the side missions in this game that are bad do not outweigh the number of side missions that are actually good. Now you might be saying, but you just talked trash about half the side missions in this game already. Well, I never said that I'm answering the question of whether all the side missions in this game are good or not, but whether or not they're actually worth playing. And yes, even though I did say some of the side missions in this game did have some bad endings and did have some repetitiveness, I did also say that those same side missions were not filler content at all and very much worth playing as many of these side missions were implemented into the game very well and not just forced down our throats or added into the game randomly like Arkham Knight did. The game gave a really well balanced way to get a taste of each side mission individually and then complete them if we wanted to, which is why the side missions in this game are very much worth playing and are some of the best missions in this entire series and that's all I gotta say about that. And with that, we've reached the end of the video, hope you enjoyed this video and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel as I post videos every single week and have several shorts on the channel dedicated to the Arkham games to always power content no matter what. Click on the bat symbol to check out my deep dive on Arkham Knight and the video right next to it to check out my Marvel Spider-Man deep dive which are both just like this video but just about those games. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you all next week with another video. Peace!